So welcome to this video on making the coffee maker um, in Onshape and it's on page 128 of our books Discover Graphics. Okay, so this is what we're going to make here and the things we're going to learn while doing it um, after you've probably you've been doing internal tangents and external tangents okay that's probably the topic with your teacher at this stage all right so we're going to learn how to sketch on a plane add dimensions adding a tangent relation adding construction lines find the center of the circle the revolve tool the extrude tool and the appearance tool right so we'll begin Okay, so here are the overall dimensions, 70 uh, divided by 2 is 35, 90 divided by 2 is 45. Right, I'm going to need a center line to start, so I'm going to begin. I'm going to select sketch, immediately it says select the sketch plane. I'm going to select the front plane, and I can hit my cube to look straight at it here. I'm going to press L for the line tool, I'm going to draw a line. Okay, and I'm going to press Q to make it a construction line. So I'm drawing an axis. I'm going to press D to dimension it. I can type in 160 there. Now, I'm going to draw the profile of the outline of the coffee maker. So half the outline, half the bottom uh, bit of the red. So line tool. I'm going to click the middle over roughly about 45 move your mouse at an angle okay up across into the center down back until it hits it and now I'm going to add measurements D for dimension letter D for dimension click the bottom line type in 45 uh, as you see here 90 divided by 2 is 45, 35, and the total height is 1110. So I'm going to click this the midline there, that line there in orange. I'm going to left click to type in the number 35. I'm going to click this point here with the left click button on my mouse. Left click the bottom. I'm going to type in 10. And then I need to left click okay this line here at the top down left click the bottom i want to type in 110 now i'm going to go to revolve and make this into the base so i'm going to tick my uh, select my revolve axis and i'm going to tick that one it picks up this here if it doesn't pick it up it's probably because there's overlapping lines in your sketch or there's a gap I'm going to tick OK. I'm going to rename that. So I renamed the feature and I renamed the part at the bottom. Now I'm going to focus on this part here. It's 20 high, 35 wide. OK. So I have to go sketch. Select the sketch pane in the front. And press Q there to look at it in 3d i'm going to press l for line so l for line so drew it in i'm going to tick that press q to make it a light line d for dimension i'm going to make it 25 and it just disappeared there on me because okay it, i was too far as that was a good learning outcome there so I zoomed out there so 25 I said it was and okay so again it was it's gone upwards there on the screen if it disappears it's probably gone up on your screen and to click that point there move it in 3d so how I do that is I hold on the scroll wheel I'm going to click the bottom there uh, coincident okay now back to the front so I'm going to draw in a corner rectangle, so letter G, left click at the point, move it out, left click there, D for dimension, 
type in 20 there. If I'm here, type in 35, revolve. So select your axis, it's this one there. Press new here, so it's a new solid. And click OK. And then I'm going to rename these. Right click rename. Now I'm going to do the top of it now. Okay, so the lid. And we're going to integrate something from circles here, how to find the center of a circle. Uh, when given the radius and two points are given two points on the ends of a chord. So I'm going to click sketch, select a plane, front plane, line, so L for line, and you can press the letter Q while it's drawn, make sure it's going straight up. Okay, I can press L to turn it off and click that point. Uh, press that on the fix there, and that just saves you having to add in the dimension. Now I'm going to uh, select a point here, so one, two, drew them out in the area, turn off the point tool by pressing escape, and click the point and the line, and select coincidence, so that points, puts the point on the line. I'm going to click the point, the second point, and the circle, and press coincident, or sorry, I meant to press pierce there, so I'm going to do it again, click the point, and the curve, okay, and I'm going to press pierce. So now they're on together. Go back to front there. D for dimension, so it's 15. Now I'm going to press L for line, so I'm going to press Q for construction. So there's a chord on the circle. I'm going to draw another line now. So it has to be from the middle, and I'm going to just draw it nice and far. I'm going to turn it off by pressing L. I'm going to click the point there and the center line, and I'm going to press coincident. So it's uh, on the center line. Now I'm going to click this, uh, the bisector. That is a bisector of a chord. I'm going to click that chord there. Okay, and I am going to select perpendicular. Now, there is the center point of the circle, so C for circle. Okay, you can draw it out there. L for line. So I've cordoned off my area. M for trim, to trim away lines. Okay, and then revolve. So Select your revolve axis because it knows it there. New part, click OK, rename them. So I've renamed them. Now I'm going to do the little sphere at the top, the little uh, knob on the plunger. So I'm going to go sketch, select a plane to draw on from plane. Press that button there to look straight at it. Use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom out and in. Okay, line, uh, Q to make it a light line. So it doesn't matter how far it goes up. Okay, and to save me having to dimension it, I can click that point and press fix. Make sure it's straight up, so make sure it has that there vertical. If it doesn't, click it and press that button there. Now, C for circle, so I'm going to draw the circle there. Okay, it has to be uh, touching that there, so it's uh, radius 10 and 15, it's 25, okay, from the bottom there, all the way from the bottom uh, is 110, 130, 145. Yeah, I'm still learning this myself, so I don't know all the relations yet. D for dimension. Click the, uh, click the point there, so that will come up if you've done it twice, or click the same point twice. So D, click that point, and the bottom, type in 145, or sorry, uh, 
five. I mentioned there twenty. Now line. So we're going to join these together. M for using the scissors for trim. Cut away that part there. Revolve. Select that axis. And tick OK. We'll rename that. So we've renamed them and now we're going to do the handle. I'm going to do, uh, uh, do that now. Alright, so we're going to go sketch, select the sketch plane, front plane, C for circle, I'm going to draw two circles, okay, I'm going to click the circle here, hold down the rolly or scroll wheel in my mouse, click that circle there, uh, pierce, so that means they intersect, okay, now, uh, what's the next thing I'm going to click? that circle there sorry uh, just press escape there unselect everything click that point there and that, and that circle okay select coincident now we can go back to looking straight at it okay I'm going to draw in a line so L for line okay and I'm going to draw down from the circle press Q for construction Okay, uh, D for dimension, so it's 35 there, and then 1110 high, and I can just delete, ah, shucks, control Z to undo, um, what could I say, anything that's red here, click the red boxes, just press delete, Sorry about that, I'll just I'll move that to the other side. Now, I'm going to click the circle on that line there. Tangent, D for dimension. Click the circle, 40. This one here is 24, as in the book. Uh, click the bottom point on the line there that's 22 okay now we're going to do a tangent here so we're going to press L for line draw a line from one circle to the other turn off the line to click the line on the top circle and select tangent click the line on the bottom circle and press T for tangent now I'm going to get you to press the letter L, line, to the center, and across to there. And down here from line, across, and back there. If it goes off, or sometimes it can click off, so you'll just have to redraw really them in. M for trim entities, I'm going to cut away that part of the circle that part and now I'm going to click one two three four I'm going to press the letter Q so there are construction lines right I'm going to teach you how to offset them now so O for offset copies an existing sketch outwards click the circle type in two okay Click this one in here, type in 2, and then go down to the bottom one. Okay, move the move it around by hitting this arrow here to get it inside and type in 2. Okay, now uh, press escape to turn off offset. Now you notice there's some blue points here, so I just need to hold on to those blue points and just drag them out a little bit. So 
the view and drag them on because all sets are just parallel distances okay or, or perpendicular distances rather they don't know where exactly they're going going just yet it's been very difficult to select okay so i'm going to trim away press the letter n to cut away things so cut away those lines cut away that and I'm going to M again so in a moment sign sorry it's a line just draw a line from there to there M to cut away that and now I just have to focus on getting this blue dot away I want to have everything back so line I'm going to press uh, escape to turn off the line tool there and I'm focused on getting this fixed so I'm just going to draw a line and press Q to have it light M for trim uh, Control Z, I'm not going to do that so, well, truth be told I don't really know what's wrong there so I don't got it sorted all right so we're going to make this into 3d so extrude and we're going to have it going two ways the distance we're going to have is five second end position five and we're going to make sure that it's new so it'll be a new part there click ok and now I'm going to combine the handle in the glass here so I'm going to type in under search tools composite composite parts so it joins them together one two and click OK alright and now we have these together right I'll rename these so finally what I'm going to do is show you how to change the appearance of them so I can press appearance panel I can go to the bottom click this add face appearance so we're going to go with red so I can click that face is red on the bottom and then when I'm done I'm going to tick OK now I can click the glass add face uh, add face appearance I'm just going to X out of that So, add to its appearance, okay, the glass I leave as this light blue, so there we go, and tick OK, I'm going to add it again, the lid, so I'll go with red again for the lid, the plunger handle, I'm going to go again, click OK, and then the part okay the handle I'm going to go this one here and I'm going to make it purple for the crack so add faces so you can select them if you hold down your mouse left click and drag you can select a lot in one go so I'll just make sure I color them all in and that'll be that done Cheers, thank you, bye-bye.